Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you five Gmail features that every teacher should know how to use. All five of these are really simple, easy things to set up and can be great time savers for you. So let's jump into it with our first one. I'm going to compose a new message here. And it doesn't matter who I send this message to. I'll just send it off to Mason. And it's going to be a quick little reminder message and it's just going to say simply remember to bring back your library books and rather than sending it out right now I'm gonna use this little feature for scheduling sending and our library day is Wednesday so I'm gonna pick a date and time for next Tuesday and we can specify a time that you want to send out that message, maybe 3.35 p.m. on July 9th. And so now I'm sending that out on Tuesday afternoon so that hopefully my student remembers to bring back his books on Wednesday morning for a library day. That's item number one. Item number two. Again, we're just going to jump right into the compose mode. And I'm going to send out a message to my colleague. And we'll call it info for Monday's meeting and I'm just going to write in here some important info for Monday's meeting you won't believe okay. now this particular colleague has a habit of printing out every email and sometimes forgetting that they're on a networked printer where anyone can grab it. So what I'm going to use is the confidential mode, which is new for all Gmail accounts now. I'm going to select that option, and I'm going to say the message expires in one week. But you can see there I can have it expire in three months or in five years if I wanted to. And using this confidential mode will prevent the recipient from forwarding, copying, printing, or downloading the message. I can even add some extra security by saying that you have to enter an SMS code in order to unlock the message. We'll save it and now send that out. This next feature I'm going to show you can be a huge time saver at the beginning of the school year when you find yourself answering a whole lot of the same type of messages over and over again. So what we're going to use is canned responses. Now, to make sure that you have canned responses turned on, go into your settings and select the settings menu for advanced and make sure that you have canned responses templates enabled. Now that we have that enabled, let's go back to the inbox and hit a compose message and I can compose this message to anybody because I'm not actually going to send this one out so I can send it to Bob at Bob.com and we'll just say this is a uh, you know, handouts and I'm gonna write that you can find all of the course handouts and the syllabus on the class website and in Google Classroom. You can download and print from there. Now, I get a lot of messages at the beginning of the semester about the handouts. So I'm going to save this message. And under my more options, I'll have canned responses. And I'm going to save this draft as a template. And I'm going to select save as new template. I'll just call it handouts. You can change that template name if you want, but I'll just call this one handouts and save it. Now, anytime I get an email like this one, like where are the handouts? Yo, Mr. Byrne, I can't find any copies of the handouts, but can you help me? I'll just hit the reply button. I'll go down 
to this More Options menu, select Canned Responses, select Handouts. It fills it all in for me, and I can send that off. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this is that if you find yourself needing to send attachments, you'll have to remember to manually add those attachments when you send off your canned response. But your canned response can have as many words as you want. You can write a 500 word canned response and have that automatically inserted whenever you choose that from your menu. Now, on those same idea of canned responses, I want to make sure that you have enabled in your settings the Smart Compose and Smart Compose personalization features turned on. Both of these features will save you a little bit of time when you're writing back to students or parents or to anybody who sent you a message. So, for example here, if I get a message from Mason, I can hit reply and I'll just write in hi Mason and it starts to fill in the rest of Mason's name. It knows that. Thanks for reaching out. And it predicts that that's what I'm going to try to write. Just hit my tab and it fills it in. Write my name and send it off. So it can be a little bit of a time saver when you're trying to personalize a message or you're trying to reply quickly to a message. And the last thing we're going to look at is the option to filter your mail as it arrives in your inbox. So let's start by going back into our settings. And we're going to look at labels. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to create a new label. And that new label is going to be called Questions About Homework. I'm going to create that label. Now, I'm going to go into Filters and Blocked Addresses. And we're going to create a new filter. And our filter in this case is going to be anything that has the words homework in it. So anything that has the word homework in it, we're now going to select create filter. And I'm going to apply the label questions about homework. And this way I will have a list of questions about homework appearing in the labels right here on the left hand side of my inbox create that filter so that anytime a student emails me with a question about homework, it automatically has that label on it, and I can might go back in and answer those all in one batch instead of answering them as they filter in. Now I can do other things with these filters. Let's create another filter. Let's say I want to have one for anything coming from a specific email address or email domain. So anything coming from that email domain. Let's go in and create a filter. And I'm going to say star it. Or I'm going to say always mark it as important. Or again, I could apply the label to it. I can even apply a new label and call this super important. And create that filter in that manner. So those are five things you can do, five features of Gmail that could help you save some time this fall. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com and practicaledtech.com.